Hi there, this is the first of two separate topic videos focusing on a key intervention in the labour market, namely a minimum wage. And in this session, we're just going to focus on the analysis, the economic analysis of a basic minimum wage in a labour market. We know that in the UK, for example, there's a huge dispersion, enormous variation in average gross weekly pay across jobs. <clears throat> this data is taken from 2015. It's the the lowest paid jobs in the UK, the median full-time gross weekly pay before deductions. All of these jobs, full-time pay is less than £300 per week, including uh, median pay, the middle value in the distribution for waiters and waitresses of less than £270 a week. So clearly the minimum wage issue is very pertinent, very topical, and one that economists can get their teeth stuck into. Just as an update for you ahead of the exams, in April 2016, the 1st of April, uh, the UK introduced a new minimum wage for workers over 25 years. George Osborne has effectively rebranded the minimum wage as the new national living wage, <clears throat> £7.20 an hour for workers over age over 25. The key thing though, it's not a living wage. It's the new minimum wage. It's not the living wage as proposed and established by the Living Wage Foundation. It's a little bit naughty of Osborne to rebrand it, but there we go. Interestingly already, firms are beginning to adjust to this new minimum wage. Uh, some firms are cutting overtime payments, some firms are cutting staff perks, such as free lunches and things, to offset some of the extra costs of the living wage. We'll come on to that when we look at the evaluation in our second topic video. Big debate, of course, in the UK about the living wage. Currently, minimum wage is £7.20. Uh, let's put that into perspective. The UK, in, if you, if you uh, adjust to at Sterling, the UK has the fourth largest minimum wage in the European Union. Uh, Netherlands, France and Luxembourg have the higher minimum wages. Again, so you can put it in context, consider minimum wages in countries such as Romania and Bulgaria, which are staggeringly low. Of course, per capita incomes in those countries are much lower as well. Another way of expressing the minimum wage is not just how many pounds per hour it is, but how many Big Macs you can earn if you worked an hour at the minimum wage. So in the UK, um, you could work, you could buy two and a half Big Macs for working an hour, slightly less than Ireland, 2.3, uh, and uh, 2.6 in uh, Germany, in Luxembourg, sorry. But uh, look at uh, some other countries there, particularly the Baltic states, you can't even uh, earn a Big Mac if you work an hour on the minimum wage in those countries. So let's go through the basic analysis. That's what we're here for. The core diagram is going to be a labour market diagram with the wage on the y-axis and the employment of labour on the x-axis. We assume here we have a free market wage, uh, a W1, with employment level of E1. If we now impose a minimum wage, I'll take you over to the right-hand side of my diagram here. Key point is that a minimum wage is a pay floor and for it to be set and have any effect on the market, it must be set above the normal prevailing wage for a particular occupation. So we've set the minimum wage here at MW. There it is, there's our pay floor. Officially the wage can't fall below it. Consequence normally is that the supply of labor expands. More people are willing and able to work at a higher wage. But it could also be the case that the demand for labor from employers could contract. So labor supply could expand to E3, Labour demand could contract to E2, and as a result, you could lead to an excess supply of labour. Now, just to develop the analysis a little bit, the impact of a minimum wage does depend on two things. One is where you set the minimum wage. So in my example on the left-hand side, I've set the minimum wage a little bit above W1, and we've created an excess supply, and there's been quite a, quite a substantial fall in employment here. So the key is where you set it, how high is the minimum wage relative to the normal market? And the other neat bit of analysis to add into your answers is it depends on the elasticity of demand for labour. In other words, how responsive are businesses in terms of their employment decisions following a change in the minimum wage? Now, what I've done here is I've drawn my labour demand curve as fairly inelastic. Perhaps, for example, labour costs were a relatively small percentage of total costs. Perhaps it's tough to replace labour with capital. Uh, perhaps there's only been a short time frame for businesses to adjust to the minimum wage. 
and perhaps businesses are cutting costs elsewhere than, rather than cutting employment, as we've hinted at. Now, I've drawn my labour demand curve as inelastic here. The minimum wage is here, above the equilibrium. More people want to work, E1 to E3. But notice here, if the labour demand curve is inelastic, we see a smaller fall in employment. A smaller fall in employment. And that's going to have a consequence for the total earnings of workers at the minimum wage. This is the ways to get paid. That's employment. So the total earnings will be that rectangle area. Key analysis point is that the elasticity of labour demand affects the extent to which employment falls if we impose a minimum wage above the free market wage. So analysis, please, is important. Analyse first then evaluate. The impact of a minimum wage depends on how high the minimum wage is and crucially the elasticity of labour demand because that's going to affect how many workers keep their jobs post minimum wage. Okay so we've taken you through some of the key analysis of a minimum wage. There'll be a second topic video having a discussion about some of the evaluation of the minimum wage as a form of intervention in the labour market. Thank you.